Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we play through our Basically series. For those of you who are new to the channel, or if you're an ongoing fan, this is again the series where we put together the most ultra budget of decks. These types of decks on Arena will not force you to spend a single rare or mythic to put together. That is awesome! That's right, so without further ado, let's go ahead, let's continue with the series in a deck today that I am calling Basically plants. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So our Golgari deck today is requiring us to use black and green. We're looking at an average mana curve about 2.0. We have 16 creatures, 4 instants, 8 sorceries, 4 artifacts, 8 enchantments, and 20 lands. So the basic game plan for us is to create a bunch of plant tokens to overwhelm our opponent and get to our victory. At the same time, those plants can also help us just generate a ton of mana to then keep the value train going. We're also going to be using a tried and true method of the Culture Familiar and Witch's Oven combo, and if you haven't seen that, don't worry, we will definitely talk about that combo, which will help trigger off our plant activation, and then of course, this will help us continually go wide, go big at the same time, and we'll use a couple of other key cards to hopefully just drain out our opponents to get to that win. But how exactly is all of this that I just mentioned gonna work out? Good question. Well, I'm glad you asked. So to begin, starting with the one drop, we have Cauldron Familiar. It enters the battlefield and it drains our opponent for one. We gain one life. We'll talk about the other part of this card in just a second with a combo once we get to the non-creature spells. In the two drop slot, we have Blood Hustler and Alloy Alchemist. With the Alchemist here, you can either plot it to put it away, but then this will all allow us to buff one of our creatures to get a plus three, plus two, and gain trample until end of turn, which is really great for us to help push through damage when we need to in the mid to late game. With Blood Hustler here, this is great for us at any part in the game. I actually really like this card. It's a simple two mana Vampire Rogue 1-1 one, one that reads, whenever you commit a crime, you put a plus one plus one counter on the Blood Hustler. This ability only triggers once each turn, but you can also pay four to make target opponent lose one life and you gain one life. So this along with Culture Pillar can hopefully just keep draining on our opponent and help making sure we stabilize as we continually build up our game plan. And then finally, in the three drop slot, we have Fell Stinger. When it enters the battlefield, you can exploit a creature. To exploit a creature means you have to sacrifice it when it enters the battlefield. When you do that, target player can draw two cards and lose two life. Most of the time, you're going to want to do this to just help continually draw cards for us. But if you have to, say, commit a crime with, say, Blood Hustler, and maybe you're about to finish the game, then sometimes this can help you just close it out a little bit faster. Circling back over to the one drops to talk about the other non-creature spells, we have Fatal Push here as our catch-all removal spell. So we've seen this many times. The Revolt ability will be very easy to trigger off with how our deck works. We have Urborg Repossession here, really awesome if you can then initiate the kicker ability, but even if you can't, this just helps us keep bringing back some of our creatures that we may have to sacrifice or value, gain some life in the process, but if you do kick it, you can also bring back a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, so without that restriction, we can bring back a lot of powerful pieces to ensure that our opponent just can't get through what we're trying to do. And the final card is going to be Witch's Oven here, so this is basically what's going to then trigger off the Cat Oven combo if you haven't seen it. Long story short, Culture Familiar enters the battlefield. When you need to, you can sacrifice the cat to the Witch's Oven. You create a food token. The food token can be sacrificed again to bring back the Culture Familiar from your graveyard to the battlefield. Simply put, it's just one at a time per turn that you can do this, but with our next card, this is going to help us create a giant army of plants, and this will be the whole reason why we built the deck in the first place, which is going to be Insidious Roots. So this is a two-mana enchantment that reads... Creature tokens you control have tap to add one mana of any color. Whenever one or more creature cards leaves your graveyard, you create a 0-1 green plant creature token. Then you put a plus one plus one counter on each plant you control. Whew! This will help us then create a giant army of plants to overwhelm your opponent and go super wide and super big at the same time. Remember that also this will uh, then add those counters to even ally alchemist. So this 3-2 trampler, as we mentioned earlier, will then get even bigger along with the rest of our plant tokens to then hopefully go super big and overwhelm our opponent. There are going to be some moments, however, we're going to need to then utilize some of these other key creatures and key cards to then get some more value. So, when the three drops out, we have Back for Seconds, a sorcery that has the bargain ability. It simply reads, return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. If this spell was bargain, you may put one of those creature cards with a mana value of four or less onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your hand. So, this, if we can bargain it, maybe with one of our extra plant tokens that's cheap, allows us to then just keep reoccurring more of our creatures, get more value again out of our deck, and then also, this will actually trigger off Insidious Roots even more to keep the combos going and ensure that our opponent just can't get through our defenses. 
However, if our opponent does have some key creatures or some other key cards that just causes problems, we have another way of removal. Binding of the Old Gods, a 4-mana Saga enchantment that on the first part will allow us to destroy a non-land permanent an opponent controls. Then we can ramp with some searching for a forest card to put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then finally, all of our creatures can gain death touch until end of turn, which is a really awesome ability to just, again, either force your opponent to then do some bad blocking or just basically end up helping us win the game. As far as the mana base is concerned, again, this is going to be one of our basically decks, so we're going to keep it as simple as possible. So we have eight swamps, four forests, we have Felster and Gulch here, which will then trigger off a crime ability to the Blood Hustler, and also it does ping our opponent down, and then finally Haunted Mire. Even though it is a tap duel, it can be fetched out with Binding of the Old Gods, which is why we will be adding it to the deck. For those of you out there who are interested in then a sideboard and playing this in best of three, your best options are going to be for here, going to be Duress here, for those enemy control and combo decks out there to take off key pieces. You have some Eaten Alives here if you need to exile something in a pinch. We will have also Soul Guy Lantern, even though technically... <sighs> Wizards, once again, has part of Arena broken. This is going to be, again, two copies, so just pretend there's another copy here. We have Return to Nature as well. Master of Remembrance here. If you want to go more of the life gain and drain ability with Culture Familiar and some of your other key creatures, you can then play a more aristocrat style of deck. Elspeth's Nightmare here is going to be another little bit of extra removal, and also it also staples into it a dress, and also it's Graveyard Hate on top of what we're doing. And since also you can't really see it because, again, Wizards just needs to fix Arena for a little bit, the only other card that you can't see but is also part of the deck is going to be Ghoulish Possession. So we'll bring that up right now. Ghoulish Possession is just a simple two mana enchantment where, again, whenever one or more non token creatures die, we can create a 2 2 black zombie creature token with decay. The ability only triggers once each turn, but it's really great for us if we need to sack another token for value or then at least trigger off maybe say bastion of remembrance but with that out of the way here are now going to be the tips and tricks i'm going to give you to pilot the deck as you can tell of course in the early game try to get out your culture and familiar your blood hustlers and alloy alchemists out as much as possible to start doing a bunch of extra damage remember with a plot ability the alloy alchemist has this means that that can give that three two and trample pump to any one of our other creatures which means you can do shout a lot more damage very quickly until you're ready to actually put down the alchemist card i would honestly would wait to actually put down that plant warlock until you either need a blocker or you have your insidious roots online so that way you start pumping that up to do more damage since it does get bigger and it also has trample to force through damage if you need some time to sink some extra mana that's where your blood hustler can come in to not only again life gain and drain but also it can make itself little by little bigger as the game progresses eventually becoming just as big as a threat as the alchemist culture familiar is going to help keep that engine running because remember that you can chump block with the cat if you need to then sack it to the oven to then keep that loop going of course as i mentioned earlier it's going to take a lot of clicking, so just be prepared for that, and make sure to have patience if you're going to play a grindy deck like this. Finally, with cards such as Fell Stinger, you can be super aggro with this card by, again, sacrificing whatever creature you need to, because remember, one of the biggest advantages to your deck is, no matter what your opponent throws at you, you have ways of bringing back your creatures. Use your Urborg Repossessions, ideally with the kicker cost, or ideally use the advantage that Bargain has with Back for Seconds to keep bringing stuff back. So no matter what your opponent throws at you, your biggest advantage, of course, will be that you could outlast your opponent because you can keep recycling Binding of the Old Gods, your Fell Stingers, and you keep taking advantage of some of your tokens if you don't need that extra mana sink to use them for extra chump blocking as you keep making your game plan work. Having said that, your biggest disadvantage, as you might have figured out, is we need to rely on the graveyard to get most of our action going. So if your opponent has a lot of graveyard hate, your deck is going to stumble quite a bit. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't pull off a victory with it, but remember that a lot of our cards also require a lot of sinking of extra mana that we really need from Insidious Roots to give us with our plant tokens. And if your opponent can wipe out those Insidious Roots, if your opponent can take care of our graveyard, that's where the deck is going to struggle quite a bit. So just keep those things in mind but again, if you do want to play this in best of three, you're going to have a stronger advantage. And this is going to be one of the few basically decks that I'm going to say that probably actually works a lot better in best of three versus best of one. But however you want to play it, it's still pretty solid no matter where you take it. And as always, if you are a fan of this style of gameplay and maybe you do want to invest a little bit more to upgrade it, the simplest upgrade, as I always will mention, is just upgrade your mana base. But again, if you've seen my previous videos on this series, we don't really do a formal set of upgrades for this deck, mostly just because with these basically decks, as always, I want to encourage you to kind of start experimenting and seeing what works best for you. And if you do need some inspiration, as you see on screen right now, there are several various ways that you can go with the recursion ability, with graveyard shenanigans, with grinding out games. And if you just want to go into other colors or maybe just experiment, be sure to try out anything and everything because I highly encourage all players out there, whether you're new or returning, just see what works best for you. 
And with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck overall. Definitely, strategies like this are obviously not new to Magic. However, thanks to the most recent of sets, as you can see, they really gave a much more diverse strategy for us to work with versus what we used to utilize in the past. So, to put it another way, if you're a fan of graveyard strategies, if you're a fan of mid-range piles that can outgrind your opponent for value, and if you're a fan of sacrificing your stuff to, again, get not only that value, but also to be super resilient no matter what your opponent throws at you, definitely, I would say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to then just have a giant plant army just come out of nowhere where you can just outdo your opponent no matter how many things they blow up and then try to then extract from you, you'll definitely have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very impressed at how well this deck can pull off on a budget and i assure you you will not be disappointed that's all i have for you today thanks again for watching everyone and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life always be sure to burn bright later